Hey, hey guys, uh, welcome to our work workshop at the Polkadot Decoded e e event. And the topic of this workshop today is going to be how to use precompiles to create a staking DAO on Moon Moonbeam. Okay. Uh, so let me introduce myself first. Uh, my name is Hen Henry Dong. Um, I joined the Moonbeam Dev DevRel team in the summer of 2021. And prior to that, I worked as a so software in engineer for my Microsoft um, on the Vi Visual Studio team. Um, I first experimented with po Polkadot and sub Substrate in 2018. Um, it was after I watched uh, with Ga Gavin Woods dem demo during the Web Web3 sum Summit, where he where he created a custom blockchain in about half an hour. Uh, I, th I thought that was very cool. Um, so I have a bachelor's of science in industrial in engineering from UC Berkeley, and I'm currently working toward a, ma a math master's of science in CS um, from Georgia Tech. Um, I'm currently based in Taip Taipei, but I am orig originally from Beijing, All right? Um, so this, let me give you guys a quick uh, overview of this work workshop. Um, it's going to be broken into four parts. And um, so first, I will give you guys an uh, overview of what moon, Moonbeam is and also how staking works on moon, Moonbeam. And then I will introduce the concept of precompiles. Um, so there's a lot of there's going to be a lot of slides in the first two parts, but I'm going to go through through them pretty pretty quickly. They are just to give, give you guys some back background, um, so that you you can kind of make sense of what we're going to build, and why we design our DAO the app a certain way. And the meat of the wor workshop will be on the sec second half, um, which is actually creating the ac actual de delegation DAO. And um, so when we when we're going over that, we will go over the smart con contract and the design of the delegation DAO first, and then fi finally we are going to de deploy our smart con contracts as well as a sim simple UI you you using scaffold ETH, and at the end I will also do a quick dem demo of how like everything works. Um, so I feel feel free to ask questions in chat at any any time, and I might ask you guys some questions in the form of a polls as well. Um, okay. um, so what is Moon Moonbeam? Um, in short, it is a um, it, it is an Ethereum compatible smart contract parachain on Pol Polkadot. It is built with the sub substrate frame framework, and it has access to all the sub substrate fe features, such as, such as customizable runtime run and pal palettes, and shared security through the relay chain, and connectivity through XCM. The pal palette part is going to be pretty key for our work workshop because we will be interacting with our with the stake staking pal palette. You using Solidity smart con contracts via precompiles. Um, and also, the second point is that Moon, Moon, Moonbeam has is fully compatible with Go Ethereum JSON R, RPC endpoints, um, which enables um, seamless in, integration with. Ethereum tools and Ethereum li 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 libraries. And then the third point is that we use the same encryption um, al algorithm and wallet address form format as e Ethereum, which is the H160 style addresses. Uh, this also allows a very seam seamless u user and de developer experience based on tool tooling from the Ethereum ecosystem. And then fi finally, as I've already men men mentioned, we have full integration with the Ethereum dev, dev tools 
and we are going to see this in action during the second part of this workshop. Um, so next, I will give an overview of how staking works on Moon, Moonbeam. Uh, before we can talk about staking, we need to have a high-level view of Moon, Moonbeam consensus. This is because staking is very closely related to consensus. So Moonbeam uses a POS-based hy hybrid consensus. Um, so it's like based on proof of stake, sim similar to Polkadot. Um, basically how it works is that parachain collators collect tra transactions and then it will author blocks. And then Nim Nim Nimbus will fil filter the val valid authors for e each block from the active collator set. And then the, these blocks are then submitted and finalized by the Polkadot relay chain. Uh, basically, Nim Nimbus is a consensus me mechanism that is uh, was created for par parachains uh, on Polkadot specifically. Um, so there are primarily two main roles with, within how Moon Moonbeam staking works. And then the first role is called collator can candidates, and the second role is called the delegators. Um, basically, collator candidates run a collator's node, and they can receive the delegations, where de delegators provide votes to collator can candidates, but they do not run a node. Um, basically, there is a limited number of collators who can be in the active set at, at any given time. Um, and then the mem mem membership in the collator active set is determined by the to total bonded, which is the sum of the self-bonded amount and the plus to 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 total delegation amount. So basically, what this means is that as if you're a collator, your goal is to get the delegators to vote for you. And by voting for you, you have a higher chance of being in the active set. Um, so currently, our the highest um, so currently on Moonbeam, um, the highest sixty four collator candidates by total bond are placed in the active set, and we have been slowly expanding the active set over time. Uh, when our uh, when our parachain first launched, uh, the highest number of uh, candidates that can be in the active sets was only six sixteen, and we have grown it over time to now is six sixty four. Um, and okay, the la last thing you guys need to know is that each collator candidate can have a maximum of 300 effective delegations. And um, so kind of to go a li little bit more in depth um, about how del delegating and re revoking delegation works. Um, so to create a new del delegation, a delegation or bound more token to an existing delegation del delegation this op operation is in instant but if you want to revoke a current delegation or bound less that is a two-step process and the two steps is you need to first schedule that ac action and then after a certain period of time and we call that the re re revoking the delay per period, you can then execute that ac action. Um, and then the sec second part that's kind of important is that any one delegator can only have one re revoking or bond less action scheduled at any given time. That means the queue is the size of one. And if you schedule a new revoke ac action while, while there's already one in the queue, the pre previous one will be re replaced by the new ac action. So this slide is fairly key to why we design our staking DAO a cer certain way. So it will be good for you guys to keep this information in mind. Um, yeah, so on the, on the bottom, bottom, you guys can see an example of how the two-step ac action works. 
So the delegator will have to schedule an action first, and then it has to wait a certain period of time, a period of time like 20, like four, 48 hours. And then after that period of time pa passes, anyone can schedule, can execute the schedule that ac action. So now that we have a basic understanding of how moon, moonbeam staking works, the next concept we need to co cover is pre-compiles. So what is a pre-compile? A pre-compiled is a pre-compiled piece of code or smart contract. This concept was originally used by Ethereum for commonly used encryption and ha hashing algorithms, such as SHA-256, um, Ripe and MD fifty six, etc., 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 etc. And um, so precompiles is also a type of sub substrate primitive, and is a very important part of building cross chain interactions, as well as building in interactions with sub substrate palettes, which in include um, the the EVM pal pal palette and the e Ethereum palette. And the fi final thing that you guys need to know is that pre-compile me methods generally skip EVM execution and it's computed directly on the local pro processing nodes runtime. So what pre-compile does Moon Moonbeam have? Um, so there's quite a few and uh, they are such as parachain staking pre-compile, pallet democracy pre-compile, XCM transactor and X to tokens. And then we also have more. So if you want to see a full list, there is a list at the bot bottom of this slide, uh, which is you, you guys can just check on our like Git, Git, GitHub repo. Um, so the pre compile that we will be interacting with today is the parachain section. So next, we're gonna start look, looking at some code, and here's how you 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 guys can follow along. Um, so for anyone that wants to fo follow along or try try this at home, this is the URL to the main Git, GitHub rep repo of of this workshop. And um, so if you op open up this repo, you can see that. The readme read, read file will have a lot of useful links that you will need to run this demo yourself, su such as how to connect to our test test net and the link to our faucet to get um, some test net tokens, and also links to all the tools that we are going to be using. Um, so the first, um, so the first smart con contract that we're going to be look, looking at. It's going to be staking in, in interface .soul. This is going to be um, basically this is the in interface con contract for the moon being staking pre precompile, and this contract defines how we can in interface with the staking pal palette you using solidity smart con contracts. And let's look look at some code. Um, Um, so here in Remix, I have pull, pulled up our staking in, in, interface .sol. and um, so this precompile has met methods for both del delegators and for collators. And today we'll be mainly using that methods for delegators. So let's take a look look at one met method that we are going to be using, and that met method is here, and it's called delegate. Delegate, and what it does is that it will create a new delegation um, for a specific collator, like collator candidate. And to call this met method, you will call in four parameters. And the first parameter is the candidate, which is basically the address of the collator candidate that you want to vote for. And the second parameter is the amount, that is the amount of to tokens you want to stake. And the third and fourth are called candidate candidate delegation count and then de delegator delegation 
engage accounts. So for these, we're gonna explain a little bit more um, in a bit. So what they mean is that candidate delegation accounts is the number of delegations currently that are supporting the collator candidates. And the delegator delegation accounts is the currently the current number of existing delegations for the for the, the delegator. Um, so what I wanted to show you guys really, really quick is that um, if you guys open up your Polkadot.js app, app wallet, and you guys can link it to our testnet, which is moon based on alpha, and you guys can open up to the extreme six page. Um, and under this page, you can find all the pal palettes that are currently avail available on our, on our chain. And we can scroll down and find the parachain staking pal palettes, and you can click on it here. And then you can, under this palette, you can find the same method, the delegate here. And you can see the met method interface is exactly the same as what we defined er earlier on the staking pre compile in 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 interface. Um, so that that is basically how pre compiles work. The met method logic is run to totally in the sub substrate runtime and then return to the smart contract call caller. But the way that you access this method is through this, um, this like solidity interface. Um, so I had one qu question pre prepared for our polls. Um, if you guys wanna an answer to the polls, and I'll put the question now, out now. So the qu question I have for you guys is, um, why do we need to know the, the delegate engagement count of the collate later, as well as the, the delegator when we're calling the delegate method? Um, so, yeah. so if you guys want to see if you can get the right answer on the polls, you, you guys can try now. And then I will give you guys the answer in a second. second. All right, so the an answer for this question is that these two parameters are called weight hints, and basically they are used um, as, um, they're used by the sub subsidy runtime to uh, estimate the weight, which is kind of similar to gas. So it is basically to estimate the gas it would take to carry out this action. And the re reason we need to know the count, the candidate delegation count and the delegated delegation count is because this operation on, under the hood, they, it is an insert, insertion into a, sort, a sorted list. And the cost of that insertion into the sorted list it depends on the length of the current list. All right, guys. Um, let's go back to our slides. Um, yes. Okay. Um, so now that we have an understanding of the staking pre interface, um, let's get into what we're going to be build, building today. So what we're going to be build, building today is a del delegation DAO. Yeah. And I assume that most, mo most of you guys are, already know what a DAO is, so I won't spend any time explaining that. But these are, these are some of the requirements for what our DAO will be able to do. So the first thing is that a member of delegation DAO can deposit their tokens into the DAO smart contract. And the second thing is that the DAO will de delegate the to, to, to the total safe staking pool to a pre-selected candidate, collator candidate. And then la lastly, mem members can withdraw their stake from the DAO and receive the proportionate amount of staking rewards from the pool. Um, so 
my second question to the audience, you guys, is that why would someone want to stake through a DAO? And I will also pu publish the poll for this. Um, all right, guys. Um, so there are se several re re reasons why someone might want to stake through a DAO. One is that like, may may maybe a DAO member might not have the required min minimum stake. Or given what a DAO member have, they might not be able to in get into the top 300 effective delegations of a given collator candidate if they only stake by themselves. And thirdly, a DAO can implement certain aut automated staking strategies that can return higher staking rewards than if you were just staking by yourself. And then lastly, you can also create a DAO-based collator candidate where the DAO's to total staking pool can be used to get into the active collator set. Um, so given what we know about Moonbeam staking mechanism, let's look, look at how we want to design our DAO to do the tasks that we want it to do. To, to do. Um, so there's more than one po possible approach, but the one that I took is a stay-based approach. Um, so with, what that means is essentially the DAO will track its current state and it will restrict allow or allow certain actions to be performed depending on, depending on what the current state of the DAO it is in. So essentially, for our DAO, there will be four states. And as you can see on the slide, the first state is called collect collecting. And then the second state is called staking. And the staking state is going to be the where the DAO will be in for the vast majority of time. And the third state is called revoking. And the fourth state is called revoked. And you, can, you guys can see the links between the DAO, the states, is basically the kind of the tri trigger that must be um, the trigger that must be sat, sat, satisfied for the states to change. And um, for instance, to go from the collecting state to the state staking state, the to total amount staked on on our DAO staking pool it must reach a certain thre threshold. Um, so, the third que question that I have for you guys, which I forgot to make a poll. Is that why we can why can we not just have every mem member of this of the DAO stake and un unstake as they will? Why do we need to enforce a pretty strict state on the DAO itself? And the re reason for that is primarily because of how re revoking a stake works on on Moonbeam, and because as I explained earlier in this work workshop, it is a two step ac action. So what that means is that if our DAO does not have a clearly enforced states and it doesn't enforce a one-wayness in how the states flow, as you can see, the states flow from the first state to the second, oh, sorry, from the first state to the second state and to the third state and to the fourth state. If we don't enforce this one-wayness, it can potentially stuck in a cycle where the revoke delay is nev never finished and the re revolt can never be ac executed. And in that case, um, it is potentially possible for the to tokens to be stuck on the DAO. So we want to avoid that, which is why we enforce the DAO state. All right, so let's take a quick look at our main smart con contract for our DAO. Um, just like really quick. So this is our main smart con contract for our DAO. If you guys want to take a look at closer look at this code, this is going to be on the main our workshops Git, Git, GitHub repo. So we can see we define the four main DAO states here as an enum, and then we use this var variable here to track our DAO's current state. And then we can see our constructor me method here. We pass along a tar target, 
and we also pass among pass in like a DAO admin. So the ad admin is kind of a shortcut for a DAO. You generally want no don't want to have like any admins. So the admin can be re replaced by some form of gov governance um, in like a real a real DAO. Um, and then the two main met methods for this smart con contract are going to be at stake and uh, with withdrawal. So basically, these two me methods are as implied by their name, at stake, which basically someone wants to increase, um, add more to tokens to their share of the stake staking pool, and where with withdrawal is basically when someone wants to take take their stake out from the from the DAO to a certain wallet. And as you can see, under each me method, because our design is state-based, there's a lot of state checking. So we're checking if the current state is in one of the possible states where we allow the DAO, um, the DAO mem members to add more stake. Um, so yeah, if you guys want to get, um, take a clo closer look, you guys can go into our Git Get GitHub repo. So here, I because of time, I, I won't get too much in depth. So back to our slides. Um, so for this next up part of our work, workshop, we are going to be using a tool called Scaffold ETH, and this is a tool of comp is a compilation tool of commonly used Ethereum dev tools, which includes hardhat, ethers.js, the graph, and a React-based UI. And um, Scaffold is fully open source, and is also fully compatible with Moon Moonbeam. So it is a very useful tool for hackathons, dem demos, or MVPs for basically any time you want to iterate fast. OK, so next, um, we are going to de de deploy our smart contract and also ver verify our smart con contract with sca Scaffold ETH. Um, so let's take a quick look at our Scaffold ETH pro project architecture first. So our, our pro project fol folder is here. Uh, I think you guys can see it. And then under the fo folder, there's uh, under our project root folder, there's a folder called pack packages. And then under that folder, there's a po there's a there are four sub folders, and they are basically the di different parts that make make up scaffold ETH. And the two the main components we'll be using to today is going to be hard hard hat and also React. So under hard hard hat, we can see under the folder called con contract, we have our main del delegation DAO smart contract, and we also have our staking interface smart contract here. Um, there's a few things that you guys have to change um, to de deploy to Moon Moonbase Alpha. It's very straightforward. It's basically their main changes you guys have to make are all in hardhat.config.js. Um, and the main thing you have to change is to change the default net network to moon moon base alpha and you guys don't even have to enter in our net network rpc because that is already included as a part of sca scaffold ETH, as you can see here so this is our rpc for moon moon base alpha um, so after that let's go to our command line here and the command we need to enter to de deploy our smart con contract is simply yarn deploy. Let me try to make our window on big. All right, so wait. So let's do yarn deploy here. So now you see that at first it's comp compiling our smart contracts, and then it's giving us the transaction hash, where it's trying to de deploy the smart con contract. And once it's confirmed, we will be able to get the smart contract address.
Okay, so now the transaction is confirmed and we can see this is the smart contract address of our smart contract that we just de deployed to Moon, Moon to Moonbase Alpha. Uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to also use uh, Scaffold ETH and the EtherScan pl plugin to ver verify our smart con contract. The command that we have to put in is a little bit long, so it's, I already put it in here. Um, so on this line here, we have to change the contract address to the one that we just got, which is here. So it's actually pretty straightforward. You use yarn ver verify and then dash dash and network, and then we use Moonbase out alpha. And then here is a smart contract address that we just got. And these two things here, they are the parameters that we passed in to the smart contract constructor, which is like the address of the collator and also the admin account. And then we enter this, and now Scaffold ETH and uh, the Ether Scan plugin will verify our smart contract on our um, on the Moon Moonbeam block explorer, and our block explorer is called Moon Moon Scan. And that is an official fork of EtherScan. So it basically works exactly the same way that EtherScan works. So now we're waiting for the ver verification re results. That should be pretty fast. Um, wait, we'll wait for that. OK, so now the ver verification is done. And it gave us a link to our smart con con to our block explorer. And we can check this link on our explorer here. For instance, uh, it's not what I want. Here. So this will op open up a link in Moonscan and to our smart con contract page where it's already been fully ver verified. Okay. So let's go back to our slides, I guess. Uh, so the next thing we want to do, we also want to use Scaffold ETH to create a very simple U, UI frontend for our DAO app. And let's go back to VS Code and then check a look at what we need to change. Um, so in VS Code, I've already made the cha changes that we need to make. It's all pretty straightforward. Basically, you need to change a few lines in this file apps.jsx and then you need to change the default net network again to uh, moon initial network yeah the variable is called in initial network we need to change that to moon base alpha and then we need to pass a few props of basically um, sorry it's probably down here So we need to pass a few proper variables of the con of the basically the var variables that we want to show on our UI. So you can see them here, and the front end I use here is going to be called example. UI. Sorry, it's in here. Right. Okay. So. The front end I use here is it's called example UI. It should be around here somewhere. Oh, views. Yeah, it's un under views, example UI. And basically, it's just very simple React UI. Um, and um, because it's all very standard, e ethers.js. And React, so I, I won't spend too much time explain, explaining it. But if you guys you guys can all take take a look at this on the Git GitHub repo. Um, so let's launch this um, Re React server. And to la launch this, I simply have to type uh, yarn start. Okay. 
So now um, Scaffold ETH will launch um, the Re React ser server, which will also load up into our lo local, it will create like a, a web website on our local host. And then once it loads, we will be able to see the front end here. So as I said earlier, because I use example UI, so you just, you guys just have to click to this tab to see the front end. And then this is the front end of our del delegation DAO D app. As you can see, it shows us the target co collator, which is the collator candidate that we're stake staking to. And then because we are deploying a fresh con contract, right now the total stake amount and the member stake amount are all zero and the current DAO state is in the first state. So to test this, let's add a certain amount of stake to our DAO. Let me check what my, 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 my MetaMask is linked to the red chain. Okay. Let's stake five um, devs. And then we put five here, and then we click Add Stake to DAO. And we can sign our transaction in MetaMask. And then the transaction will confirm pretty soon. Um, also, this uh, just as a side, side note, um, we have started supporting um, fully e Ethereum e e EIP-1559. That means the transactions that you guys send on Moonbeam are the new EIP-1559 type tra transactions. So now we see that our transaction has been confirmed. We can see from the UI our total stake has been changed to five, and our mem mem member stake has also been changed to five. And because five is higher than the thre threshold that we set, the DAO state has changed from staking, uh, sorry, it has changed from collecting to staking. Um, so if we want to see the tra transaction that we just sent, we can go to Met MetaMask and go to the Block Explorer. Um, and we can copy the transaction ID here. And we can also use an another uh, block export, which is called sub subscan, to kind of kind of see more in into how what we're doing on the substrate end. Um, oh, sorry, this this might take a second second to load. Okay. So after we staked and we can, we can see that our DAO is in the staking state. And then, which means that it has an active de de delegation and it's currently um, accumulating staking rewards. The next thing we want to do, we want to try to re revoke our current delegation. And we can do that by pressing this button here. So let's try that. And it's same as before. We just signed the transaction on main, main mask. And then it will take a while to confirm. Let's go back here and see if we can find our tra transaction. So now on sub subscan, this is a transaction we sent er earlier, which is to create. So you can see here. So there's a bunch of bal balance of withdrawals, but the key here is here. We call the parachain stake staking. And under the palette, we call their delegation method. And we created a new delegation from our DAO, from our stake DAO. OK, let's go back to our front end. And we see that our transaction to schedule the re revoke has been confirmed. And we see the current DAO state has changed from um, the staking state to the revoke state. And because, like I said before, there's a period of time we have to wait between we schedule this revoke and when we can execute the revoke. And that time is about, even our test set is about four hours. So we don't have enough time. So to complete the fi final step, which is to with withdraw our stake, I we will have to use another in instance of the same smart con contract that I de deployed la last night and I scheduled a re, uh, I scheduled a re revoke on that on that contract last night, so now we can do the la last step here. 
and we can do that on Win Win on Windex. So here, uh, we can see that the current state is two, which is the re re the revoked state, and then we can also on Remix we can check the total amount of tokens staked is also five, and we use this address. Is I use the same uh, wallet address. And let's try to call our withdrawal met method here. So if this works, we should be able to withdraw five to tokens to our wallet. All right. So we see the current balance is about 20 dev. Dev is the nat nat native token on our Moonbase Alpha testnet. So once this transaction confirms, yeah, so we just see the balance increase from about 2020 to 2025. And we can see that here, the withdrawal operation was su successful. Um, so yeah, this is kind of like a very quick dem dem demo of how the DAO works. And let's go back to our slides again. Um, so I still have a, li a little bit of time and I will just go over um, kind of like slightly different to topic. The one last thing before I fin finish our workshop. Um, basically, I want to talk about uh, Moon, Moon Builders Acad Academy. This is a new online lear learning platform that Moonbeam has built for basically all Web3 Web devs. And we just started doing it this year. Um, so basically what it is, is that it is a, a hub for web web three devs to to learn is to learn how to work with Moonbeam and how to work with web 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 three pro protocols in general. And um, the content is av available in, in, in English and in chi chi Chinese. And um, it's an interactive platform that has vid 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 videos and co coding sam samples and also like in interactive quizzes. And um, so the content will include Moon, Moonbeam development in intro and also advanced courses. And it also includes some third party con content from pro projects that are in the Moonbeam ecosystem. And um, they so soon we are gonna have classes from sub subquery, from chain Chainlink and also from the graph. Um, so and also reg, 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 registration and all content are 100% free. So I encourage you guys to sign up for an account, and that way you guys will re receive up, updates when we have new new con content updates. So here is the link to our Moon Build Builders Academy, and we, as I said before, we have it available currently in, in English and also in Chinese, in Chinese. Um, so, uh, and here fi finally, um, I have some more links to uh, more re resources um, for developers. Uh, the first link is to our homepage and we have an entirely se separate page to basically for Moon, Moonbeam builders. And then the second link is to our Moon Builders Academy. And then the third link is to our developers doc, doc, documentation site, which is very which is very informative and we spent a lot of time work, working on it. And it's also avail, available in English and in Chinese. And then the fourth link is to our main GitHub repo. It's called github.com pure, pure stake. And then the third, the last link, and also the QR code, is to join our uh, our Moonbeam this Discord server. So yeah, so that is the end of my pre presentation today. Let, let me know if you have any any questions. You guys can put the questions into the chat, or you can con contact me on tele tele Telegram or on like GitHub, and. Um, so yeah, so yeah, um, so yeah. Thank, thank you guys very much for your time.
All right, I'm, I'm going to answer some Q&As. I see one in the chat from Mark, Marco. Is there a minimum amount that delegations have to bond? Couldn't someone sabotage? Yes. So the answer is yes, there is a min minimum amount. And that mi minimum amount right now on Moon on Moonbeam is about 50 glimmers. Uh, but that's also on Moon ri River is, I think it's five, um, five glimmers. And on Moonbase Al Alpha is also five. But if you guys want to check how much um, the min minimum um, delegation is, that is all on our our developer doc documentation site. Let me put the link into the answer as well. Okay, so someone asked another, another question. Will DAO staking require less time to un unstake? And for usual glimmer unstaking, it takes seven days. No, unfortunately, DAO staking in terms of like unstaking is basically under the same rules and also the same unstaking time. So I, I, I think I show the slightly shorter time is because we our smart contract was deployed on our moon moon base of a test net and the te test net the unsaking time is not as long as like our main nets Um, so what programming language is used um, for Moon Moonbeam? The main, the only smart contract language that we use is same as Ethereum. So basically, solidity. But other parachains on Pol Polkadot, they can su support other smart con contract languages. But because for Moonbeam, our goal is to provide full Ethereum compatibility compatibility we are uh, our only smart contract like language is um, solidity let me see if there are any questions that I missed okay so how um, someone already had a question. How do you connect Remix to Moonbase or to any of our net networks? I'll put the link to that in the chat. Um, all right. Seems so all of, I kind of got through the questions. Um, What do I think it would be a sustainable DAO, as most of DAOs? Um, um, okay, so for people that join late, I let me see if I can share my slides. Yeah, so for you guys who join late, um, my slides are going to be on this Git, GitHub repo. You guys can go here, and then under the repo, there's a link to the presentation slides here. Um, basically, sum summarize the, our, this work, workshop. Um, the main idea is like to show that uh, through Moon, 
implementing pre-compiles, developers can't use like sub substrate pal palettes straight from like e e Ethereum smart contracts. So they can code fully in like solidity and then they can still access all of like sub substrates palettes, which are including features like state staking, go governance, and more. Um, we are gonna introduce um, some new and more pow powerful pal palettes pretty soon. Uh, so there are like we just introduced one that's called like a ba batching pre-compile, which allows you guys to batch like more than one tra transactions into one. And then in the next month or so, we are going to introduce a new pre-compile, pre which is based on the VR VRF pal palette, which will give you guys a way to get like a randomness on chain. So yeah. Um, but in terms of su su sustainable DAOs, I, I mean, like, because we are fully compatible with e Ethereum, that means you can basically build any kind of DAOs on our chain that you can build on Ethereum. Um, so in terms of how to build DAOs to be more like sustainable and more use useful, I think that's kind of a question uh, that we can kind of like talk talk about like in a future time because that's a pretty broad like topic. So I currently don't have a very a very good answer for that. All right. Um, is there any any more questions left? Or Um, so the DAO that I showed in this work workshop, it is just kind of like a, a demo. It does not have its own token. Um, but I know that one of, one of the teams that have like entered into the Pol Polkadot hackathon, they also built a stake, a staking DAO that's kind of like based on the same idea, but that one have a lot more like fe features including its own token so if you're interested in that i can show you I, I can try to find the link and i can send you the link so that is basically like also a stake staking now build on moon, moon beam but that one has its own like to token and economics so if you want to try to check it out yeah All right, guys, if you guys don't have any questions, I'll end this session then. Thank, thank you guys very, very much for your time.